hey Nadine. So hey. you're a you're a wedding photographer from the UK, right? You won yeah, the, the Masters of Wedding Photography competition last year, and you've spoken a lot about sales on seminars and conferences, right? So I have. why do you like to teach other photographers about sales? Because I see a lot of people, really passionate and creative photographers, brilliant artists. And a lot of the time that they've come into this because they love what they do and they've given up uh, maybe their day jobs to make a go of this, to do what they love, but then struggling to really make it a viable, financially viable for them or, you know, just work for family life, etc. cetera. So um, it's something I had to do coming from my previous background. I couldn't afford to just do what I loved. I needed to make money out of it. I needed to pay a mortgage. I need to look after my children. I still want to go on holiday with the people I used to go on holiday with. So I need to make some money. And that's what I used to do. So it was a transferable skill from my previous career. And I just wanted to be able to help other people do it. I mean, it's, it's entirely non-competitive with somebody. You know, if someone else is making more money from their existing clients, that's just goodness that is not in any way competition with me. So it just feels like, why wouldn't I want to help people do that? Yeah. Um, sure. Just, so yeah. Do you think uh, like sales is underrated for, uh, for photographers? I, I think a lot of people know that they should do it better or do it more, but they're just uncomfortable with the whole notion of it. And I think that a lot of that comes from the reputation that salespeople have as people that, you know, do something bad to you. You know, they make you buy things that you don't want and then you regret it or you pay too much money for something. So for a lot of people, they just don't feel comfortable with doing that with these clients that they've worked hard to gain their respect and, um, yeah. and spent all day with. They just feel that, oh, I don't feel I can do that to them. But with a bit of re-educating about what sales actually is, you know, and it's really kind of servicing your client better. And in return, they pay you for giving them a better experience. So yeah, I think it's just about re-educating people. And then when they see it in that new light, then they don't feel so bad about doing it. The fact that they actually do already possess the skills to be able to do it, yeah. but also it's yeah. more getting over the mindset of this is not a bad thing to be doing to them. Yeah, so um, yeah, you're actually saying we don't need to do more sales, but do it in a different way. Uh, for some people, um, you know, they might not need to book more clients, but they might actually be able to make more money from the clients that they are working with already. So um, that's all goodness, you know, who doesn't want to earn more money? Um, and also sometimes for not a lot of extra effort, you can actually earn significantly more from the work you're already doing. Or if you're like me, you know, a busy mum who actually already doesn't have enough time with my children, if I can work a few less weddings and just make more from those clients then you know my family win as well as well as the business yeah. so sure. I, do, I think i find a lot of people in the same situation struggling with the same thing so uh, and it doesn't seem to be something that many other people are talking about on the speaking circuit so yeah. something i've got the skills cool. to do and it sort of like naturally happened cool so uh let's get to know you a little bit better um yeah, with some rapid fire questions with some, oh. some quick <laughs> answers you realize i actually don't have a life though right so these better not make me look really like uh, <laughs> culturally yeah, uninteresting. Yeah. i'll take it easy on you so okay. uh, what's your favorite city in the uk um i've got to say london haven't i <laughs> i know i live in london i absolutely love london um not just because i live in and around here but every time i go into london something is different this kind of pop-up culture, um, you know, just walking along the South Bank, along the River Thames. It's like a new experience every time I do it. Um, so I love that kind of fluidity and how welcoming and embracing it is of all walks of life. Like anybody and everybody feels comfortable in London. You can get away with doing anything. Yeah. Nobody really cares or, you know, or they'll embrace the fact that you're doing something wild and different. So it's, it's right. well. That, that brings us to the next question. Do you yeah. prefer beer or tonic? Gin and tonic all the way. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, I love a beer on a cold day, but if I had to choose, there's, like, there's no choice. Gin and tonic. All right. Uh, so do you uh, have any kids and how many? Two. two children, two girls aged eight and six, going on 18 and 16 in their attitudes, which I'm sure other people identify with. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> cool. So, uh, what are your favorite pizza toppings? Um, ooh, Mediterranean vegetables. So, anything courgette, aubergine, garlic, onion, all the way, sun dried tomatoes, um, and yeah, a little sprinkling yeah. of cheese. Yeah. Nice. I'm not a vegetarian, but I could eat like one. I really love vegetables. All right. So, um, who do you like to follow on social media? Um, I kind of have a love hate relationship with social media. So, you know, there are people whose work I really love, like Rocio Vega and Victor Lax is amazing. But there's also um, kind of just like industry people who are doing things a little bit differently, or people I've helped mentor to see them growing with their business and, you know, taking that kind of sales approach and making it work for them. So there's not always like big names that I wouldn't necessarily um, recommend you go follow, but I like to see people doing well and transforming their business, particularly if I've helped them. But also I find social media a little bit, it puts me off sometimes as well. And it, it makes me anxious. And I sometimes try just not to look at it too much and just do my own thing. So it's, sure. um, it's not a religious thing for me to like follow other people. Are there, are there any other things uh, outside of photography that you like to follow on social media? Um, kind of some fitness things. I'm starting to get a little bit more into, um, you know, eating healthier and, you know, working out a little bit more. So some at home kind of training programs and things like that. But as I say, not really. I'm trying to spend less time on social media and, more time actually going to the gym and actually spending time with my with my girls rather than watching other people do it <laughs> <laughs> good good so uh who's your favorite music artist oh i'm loving a band at the moment called the revivalists uh, an american group you should just check them out um it's kind of like easy listening that sounds really middle-aged but i don't mean it like that but a you know a guitar band from louisiana just amazing just that really good feel good factor music so yeah cool. they're on my sonal system pretty regularly so do you have a favorite country in the world outside of the uk um whew, anywhere where the sun shines literally you know i'm i'm so happy when the sun is shining we go to south africa quite a lot my husband is from cape town so we will visit there quite a bit and you know who doesn't love the wine in cape town so i do visit there a lot um but I had an amazing time traveling in South America. And that was a big surprise to me, actually. Um, you know, through Brazil, Bolivia, Peru, um, some of the, the poorest places in the world where people are actually the happiest and you can learn a lot from their culture, really, in terms of appreciating what you have, not taking things for granted. So I really, yeah. really enjoyed South America for that reason. So what do you like to do for fun in daily life? Um, what do I do? Fun? What's that? <laughs> um, as I start to as I'm working out a bit more, um, we just bought a boat. I love um, my, my pre-children life was about spending as much time on the water as I possibly could. So I thought I might actually you know, change tack and be a sailing instructor or something like that. Wanted to go tra uh, sailing around the world with my husband and then found out I was uh, with child quite quickly. So that kind of put the kibosh on that. So we just bought a boat that we're, I say we, like my husband's gonna renovate, because that's what he does. And then when he's made it look really good, um, we're gonna take it out and it's, we'll pull down the river and head down to the coast and just get back more into water sports because that is yeah. really what I'm doing. Anything but on, in, under the sea, but uh, it's been a while. You gotta have some time for that, right? So yeah. you're gonna cut down on your weddings then? <laughs> Um, a little bit, you know, it's, it is a slightly quieter year anyway. I don't know if, um, if you're finding that. There's certainly a lot of people here in the UK are saying that. Um, I had planned to have a slightly quieter year anyway to do some of this business development stuff that we're meant to be doing, you know, and trying to change tack a little bit this year. And there's all things that I didn't have time to do last year because I was so busy in the shooting editing cycle. All right. Well, uh, that brings us to your first favorite image, uh, yes. which is a, a bride uh, feeding the cats. Yeah. Um, so wh why is this image special to you? What, uh, yeah, tell me. Um, this image, is, it, it really resonates with me as a kind of unconventional portrait 
you know? And, you know, we all know that portrait's kind of like capturing the soul of somebody. And even though you can't see Lauren's face in this case, um, this in essence tells you everything you need to know about this lady. She's a busy mum of three. She's even on her wedding day, you know, very grounded and not in the slightest bit precious about the fact that she's in her wedding dress and remembering to feed the cat, you know, always thinking of others. And I think a lot of brides can get caught up in you know, this whole oh, perfect dress and don't touch my dress or put gloves on to touch my dress, you know. And what I just loved is that she approached her whole wedding like this, as in these things just don't matter. The important thing is it's my people around me, my home environment, just relaxing and enjoying the day and making it your own. So I've learned to see um, the beauty in the ordinary. I mean, this can't be more ordinary, right? She's got the, the washing basket yeah. next to her and the kids' toys in the background or something and, you know, the cat food. Like, this couldn't be a more ordinary home scene. But to me, it's beautiful because it just shows who Lauren is, you know, better than any, um, you know, beautifully posed portrait I might make of her. That probably isn't actually her, just what stereotypically is, you know, a beautiful bridal portrait. But to me, this is... A beautiful bridal portrait of yeah. of Lauren, you know. And we don't ever, it, need everything to look Pinterestingly perfect, you know. Yeah. And it also shows that uh, a wedding day is just a regular day, <laughs> also, day. right? <laughs> and I I want clients to see it like that, you know. I want clients that are focused on the important things that aren't focused. I mean, it's fine if they've got pretty details, and you know, I'm not telling people they shouldn't care about those things, but prioritize and focus on those things. Don't obsess about those things because sometimes those things aren't quite right or somebody didn't put them in the right place. And I just don't want a bride, my ideal bride, to be to let that ruin her day. You know, if she's gone to the, if she wants it to look pretty great, but if it doesn't matter to her that it's not right, then that is to me, I know that the photos I'm going to take of her are probably going to, and the style of photos I want to take are probably going to resonate with her more than someone who wants everything just to look picture perfect all the time. And did you talk about the bride, about this, this image? She loves it. She yeah. initially went, oh my God. And then, and then when I said, to, you know, I think you do have to kind of coach and educate your clients to help them see the beauty in these things because they get absorbed and, you know, um, whitewashed into, oh, I've got to look, you know, I've got to look great. Lauren's not particularly like that, but I've got other clients who, you know, they may be a little bit more image conscious. And, and I know this because I, when in my album review meetings, I sit and go through a lot of the images with my clients. So I really get like real feedback on which images they like, or if they don't pick a particular image, I know why it is. And sometimes it's for completely crazy reasons. Like they, one bride didn't pick any photos from her speeches and I said why is that like your speeches were brilliant you've got some great reactions you know it's really li like a really lively part of the day and she's like oh but because it'd been raining my hair was a bit frizzy and I'm a bit shiny because it's hot and I was like really like you're going to like skip this whole part of the day because of that and then once I kind of helped her to see that we've got all these lovely photos from earlier where she looks pristine you know, there's real moments in here, like tender moments with her, um, her parents and, you know, her husband that you're just going to completely overlook because of your slightly frizzy hair. Doesn't the slightly frizzy hair like tell the story of the wedding day that, you know, it did rain a little bit. That's part of the story. You can explain these things away. But when you take time to kind of educate them like that, they kind of go, oh, yeah, you're right. And the husband will be like, see, I told you so, you know. Yeah. So I think it's kind of our duty sometimes to help our clients see through, you know, these kind of preconceptions of what their wedding should look like. And, and, and they've ended up with a much truer story and one that in the end they actually agree with than if I'd have just worked with the pictures that they chose, for instance, you know. Yeah. So I think it's our job to help educate our clients that it doesn't all have to look beautiful all Absolutely. the time. Absolutely. All right. So I heard you did quite a special talk at an event called Speak Now. Oh, yes. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about the event and uh, what your talk was about? Yeah. Um, it was an interesting one, actually. It was um, created by another photographer called Marianne Chua. hope I've pronounced her surname correctly. Um, she has been quite active for a while in trying to get women to be more visible in the industry, um, you know, without wanting to sound like a feminist, because I'm really not one, but um, 
photography is often seen as a very male dominated environment, not particularly at the shooting level, but you know, at the brand ambassador level and the conference organizing level and the speaking level. I mean, it was starting to see a lot more female speakers now, but really it kind of came out of a, a recognition that women often don't put themselves forward. So it can be male dominated because men are more willing to put themselves forward and, and go for it more. So why are women not doing that? And, oftentimes it comes down to a confidence thing just not believing enough in themselves or not feeling that they um, they don't have the experience or the skill set to do it so Marianne created this um, event specifically for women not exclusively we had a couple of guys there but aimed at women to talk about what are the issues like why are you not up there or or women who are up there you know what how they overcame it so what tips and advice would you give for someone thinking or toying with the idea of speaking or wanting to be a brand ambassador? So we had a few key talks from, from people to just share that love and, and help people along the way. And, um, and, and also one thing it was brilliant for is giving a, plat like a safe platform for a few people to try it out. So they had three new speakers just come up and talk about something that they wanted to. This is their kind of inaugural outing in the speaking world. Yeah. Um, in a safe place and then give them that confidence that, you know, now they've broken the seal, um, they can you know, go forward and try it elsewhere. Great, great. Sounds good. Let's, uh, let's go and have a look at your next favorite image, which is uh, this grandma walking <laughs> past the scene in, uh, in a portrait uh, shoot, right? <laughs> yeah, oh, I love this picture. Um, this is an amazing, it was one of my favorite weddings anyway. This was um, a really like, cool couple who I knew a little bit through a friend. Um, and they, they took me to Croatia to shoot their beautiful wedding in the center of Croatia, in, in, sorry, in the, middle of in, in the middle of Dubrovnik in the middle of summer. And I wanted to make this destination wedding count. You know, it's such a beautiful city and I wanted to really showcase it in their photos. So I'd done a little bit of a scout, like a, you know, a scouting reconnaissance mission to see where I want to take some images and yeah. I and I love like I love clean compositions and this wall was just screaming out for a bride and groom you know where that window is you know the sixth window should be and I saw this wall and I thought yeah that's where I want to put the bride and groom this will fit like a really like nice little uh, neat composition but it's crazy busy in July in the middle of um, Dubrovnik in the middle of Dubrovnik city so I was just waiting for this nice, you know, clean space, just for the, the bride and groom to get a really clean portrait. Waiting and waiting and waiting. <laughs> to the point where you're thinking, you know, should I just can it now? Am I taking up too much time? You know, should we be just move on? Because so, so many tourists coming and going. And then we just got this break. It was like a hallelujah moment. I was like, I can get a like, clean shot. And then this old Nana like walks around the corner with her, you know, her walking stick. And I, yeah, my initial instinct was, ah, you know, like you just ruined my vision. Go, go. Then, then, I was like, yeah, how long? And I thought, no, 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 she's actually making this picture, you know, uh, um, because it would have been a nice picture beforehand. But I love this sort of, you know, um, unexpected element, like the, the gift from the photography gods. And I think really the lesson for me was like embrace the change. You know, I had a vision of what I wanted it to look like. And I wasn't quite getting it because of all this other you know, traffic that was going past. Yeah. And then seeing her and thinking, no, actually, she is making this picture. And just and then changing my mind to make sure that I'm going to wait for her to do the right thing and make sure she's compositionally well placed between those windows as well. So it's just okay. you know being willing to adapt and change. So have a plan, but see like you know a moment killer can actually you know, become the moment winner in this case. Yeah, and um, uh, the, the bride and groom have a great expression in this photo as well. Yeah. Um, did you uh, and yeah direct that in any way, or did you say something to them, or did it just laugh because of the granny walking yeah. by, or what it's, happened? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a you know, it's a contrived portrait in that I clearly put them there. But the actual moment of what's happening is is completely real because they were in on this. Let's wait. Let's wait for the space to clear. And you know they were committed to making this a good picture. And I'm like, you're just going to have to bring it when it happens, you know. And then they so and we've got it. And then we're working it. And there's this old lady comes, and it's just the, the sheer like laughter and that kind of oh, you know, you can't plan for this. 
but I love I love their expressions in it, and it, and it does, you know, for me, like really make the image because it's just it is a natural moment in what is otherwise would have been quite a staged portrait and probably not that good at the end of the day, just yeah. nice, you know. But I love it now. It's, uh, yeah, it's yeah, you need something favorite. like that in a portrait yeah. to be uh, strong, right? Yeah, totally. Yeah, for it to be really strong as opposed to nice. So yeah, so it's just for me like the lesson in there is just like embracing the change, you know, and then maybe and also looking for. You know, I'm a little bit more now looking for things that could interrupt what is otherwise like a nice picture, you know, yeah. flying across someone's face or, you know, just something that, again, sometimes you have to educate your clients a little bit that this is not an outtake. This is not a failure. Like this is the, this is the best image. And the groom sees it already. Like this is his favorite photo from their whole wedding. Cause he said, it's such a Croatian old lady thing to do. Like once people started to see that we were trying to take this nice picture, people were holding back, you know, not this old lady. She's like, I'm not waiting for anybody. I'm just going to yeah. have got to like age 90 and have to hang around for some foreign photographer. Yeah. So, uh, I just like the kind of attitude from her as well. And he said, it's a very Croatian thing. So it represents for him because he's from there. It represents for him, you know, a very personal element to that photo too. Well, talk about educating your clients. Do you always take them on the shower? Uh, which brings us to our, to our next image. <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, why not? Um, sort of like the art of the possible, isn't it? You know, I think it, it all depends on the relationship you have with them. And I'm really wanting with all my clients to get them to trust me and to believe in me. And, and thankfully, most of them do. I don't have to work so hard on that. But um, how this kind of came about really is another big part of my work ethic, which is just to turn up really early. Like their wedding wasn't till quite late in the afternoon, right? So really in terms of like wedding style coverage, you know, probably wouldn't need it to have been with them till about four in the afternoon. But, um, you know, I like to work hard really. And it felt to me like a cheat to turn up on a Saturday wedding at four o'clock in the afternoon. I was like, what are you doing beforehand? I said, oh, we're just going to go to the barbers and have our hair cut and then we're going to have some lunch just with the immediate family. And then we'll be getting changed together at our apartment. And I just said, well, look, you know, how about I just come along and capture all that in a very kind of natural, low key way, just to document the full story. Because otherwise I feel like I'm shortchanging you. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, sure, come along. So that might be very much very interesting happening in our flat, but, you know, come along. So I was just hanging around with them in the morning and then we went to lunch. And this is actually part of the groom prep scene if you like it this is starting to get ready to get dressed and I just said to them look you know I felt a bit experimental I had time um I'd probably seen you know two man and their shower shots like they, they do brilliant shower shots I'm probably thinking oh, do I just give that a try you know and uh yeah just feeling a little bit experimental that I had the time and I just said to them how do you feel about this you know I know it might not ever be everyone's cup of tea but We'd had, we'd formed quite a, you know, a good bond in the morning. They were like, yeah, sure, give it a go. And I think the fact that, you know, clearly a gay couple, I'm a woman, there's never going to be any kind of like chemistry or I had no interest in looking down there, what's going on, you know, they were just completely open to it. And so I love it for, you know, a couple of reasons that me being experimental and being willing to try something new paid off. I mean, it's not the best shower shot ever, but you know, I've got colour gels in there and I, I tweak the lights a lot to try and get it right in, in the setup. So like I worked hard for it. The client was willing to trust me and embrace it, which is, uh, which is brilliant. But also just, you know, that whole show up early gives you time to experiment and relax into these things. And I, and I did educate them a bit that this may not work. You know, this is the first time I've done it. I was open with them. You know, it may be terrible but you know would you be willing to let me try and they were like hell yes you know and i think if i if i kind of pretended i was the master of shower shots you know i don't know what their reaction to that would would be i said like you know there are better ones but they love it and yeah. and and what it did do is it showed that they kind of really cared about making something like wow for them rather than just doing the safe regular shots yeah sure so um, you've also won quite a few awards with, uh, with all your wedding images, right? In the last yeah. few years. Um, yeah. Has it helped you in any way to, um, to compete in awards, to uh, the process of picking your images and selecting? And um, is it something you think um, is, is good for photographers to grow? Yeah, I mean, 
there's a there's a yes and no answer like with all my things right <laughs> um i i think contests have a really important place in your growth as a photographer so i mean first of all we're all like a bit fragile with our egos about our work aren't we we're always our own worst enemies about thinking that we're terrible so winning awards is that nice little bit of an ego boost and particularly you know they're like credible when you're up against other credible photographers and you're winning either alongside them you know or beating other people that you would expect it to have lost to that's a real good confidence boost which we all need you know even the really established photographers need that confidence boost so it's good when you're winning you know but also i find that the process of going through all my photos to find something that i feel is award worthy because you can also fall into the element element of thinking you're owning it and you're doing a really good job and then when you start looking at your work you think hmm it's not quite award winning or I, what I liked about this photo is just not quite good enough. You know, there's something that's not right. So that kind of, once you start to compete at a, at a level where you're seeing really good photos, it makes you look at yours so much harder and, and maybe you improve as a result of that when you next go and take a similar photo is not to make that mistake. So I think it does raise the, the bar in your own work by forcing you to like really review, is this an award-winning photo? Like, like the, you know, the Dubrovnik couple. It's a nice photo, but that wouldn't have won an award without the lady walking in front, you know? So mm -hmm. what can you do to make your work just that bit stronger? Yeah. And I think the, uh, the path from like a starting wedding photographer to an award-winning wedding photographer can be quite long. Um, but uh, I see photographers submitting for years and years and not winning anything yeah. uh, but like in the end it's it always seems to to um yeah make them a better photographer anyway right? yeah because i think you know if you're say if you're submitting your work first of all you care enough about you know making really good pictures but and that you're wanting to stand out so that probably shows a bit of a work ethic anyway that you're trying you're really trying hard you're not just doing this you know anyone can please their couple right it's easy to make photos that your couple are going to love and the family are gonna love. But like the ones that make for other photographers and judges of photographers, of photography contests, ones that they're going to love, you know, their standard is so much higher. So I think if you're even sort of aiming for that, you're way above, you know, your average wedding photographer out there anyway. So it's, it's a good thing in that respect. And keeping you on your toes to think, I didn't win this time, you know, why? You know, I'm just not, this just wasn't quite good enough and just try harder. But, and, and really I'd say like the, if you're struggling to get past that early phase of I'm just not winning is get some critiquing with, you know, someone who does judge wedding com contests or someone whose work, you know, you see winning awards and say, what is it that you see in this or don't see in this picture? You know, what would make this photo better? And critiquing from other people is really the best thing for your own work. Just don't, sit back and think, you know, this is the way I do it. Get someone else to look at it and they might point out something you just had not seen before. So um, what are your goals exactly when you go to a wedding? Um, I kind of really want, my goal is just to make people relax with me. You know, I don't want to pretend that I'm, I'm not there because I'm clearly there with my two big cameras, but I want to ingratiate myself to people that, they realize, oh, it's, she's Nadine, she's nice, don't worry about her. So that then they just carry on as they would as if I wasn't there. Um, because it, it means that I can then get the natural photos or the fun photos. If I become part of the fun and they can allow me in, then I know that I'm going to get more of the photos that I want. Um, so it's really about like, it's the people skills, about like, getting people to relax and to just feel comfortable with the whole process of being photographed. To the point that they don't even realize that I'm, I'm not that I'm not, they realize I'm there, but that I'm not having any impact on being there, if that makes sense. You know, like it's okay for me to be scrabbling around at their knees at the table, you know, um, when I'm trying to shoot through some, some candles and glasses for the speeches, you know. If I've done my job throughout the day, the guests are almost sometimes moving aside to like smooth the path for me because they're on board. They realize that I'm trying to make good pictures for them and I care about doing a good job. So it's really about, it's the people skills for me, is that making sure everyone well, likes me, I don't need to be their friend, but respects what I'm doing. 
to so that I can get great pictures of them. That's essentially it. So that's my goal. Yeah, great goals. So um, do you have any like big call goals for the future? Uh, well, I do want to this year do some like, maybe branch out into some sort of niches that I have found a way I could potentially create. So outside of wedding photography, um, using a couple of like contacts that I have, you know, which aren't, aren't, aren't kind of really obvious. I don't really want to say like, <laughs> don't give away too much just yet. But, um, you know, I've always got a mind of how lo what's the lifespan of a photographer, you know, a wedding photographer, working the hours that we work and the strain on our well, physical strain on our bodies. And also just how bookable am I going to be at 65, you know, <laughs> like who's going to choose me as their photographer to be, you know, getting down and crazy on the dance floor with them age 65. So I'm, I'm very mindful as I get a little bit older about this may not last forever. So how am I going to, you know, provide for my pension going forward? So, yeah. um, so I've got a couple of you know, things that I'm looking at this year that are probably not sort of age dependent, you know, um, where potentially being slightly more mature in this market could potentially work to your advantage. Um, so yeah, having a little bit of reset time to create some promotional material, do some networking with people in those particular parts of the industry, test it out, you know, get, build a portfolio in that area so that I can just rely a little bit less on, on weddings, just with that sort of future in mind. And also the a bit of variety and not having to be away for the whole weekend all the time, you know? Yeah. Is it more about teaching, teaching and photography? Um, this this isn't but i do really enjoy the teaching and you know since i've been doing workshops and mentoring i really really enjoy that actually and and i think i'm quite good at it well people tell me i'm quite good at it so i do think that is an area where you can, as long as you stay current you know being a practitioner as well as a teacher i think is important so um i would like to do more of that this year i'm already planning um to do more of that in terms of teaching right. my workshops and um, so uh, you said you you also do the mentoring uh, the it's a one on one mentoring sessions right is it yeah, like I, a, yeah. Tra a trajectory for uh, like a whole year or half a year or well, what do you yeah at the moment at the moment it's um you know a, lo a lot of it is around the business aspects um but i really on an informal basis have enjoyed helping photographers you know critiquing their work looking at how they might be able to just make stronger images. So there's a few people with whom I'm planning to do something a bit more, uh, a bit more structured, like maybe a three month program with it than a review. But at the moment it's quite um, on a, a kind of hourly basis, you know, like a th we'll, we'll, we'll book in like a three, three hour slots, three times one hour slots, and then see where they're at at the end of it. So say it's kind of born out, originally born out of the business side but I really enjoy that critiquing and mentoring and helping people reevaluate re their images, etc. So yeah, a little bit more of that this year. All right. Well, we're going to share some of your, uh, your links and where you're going to speak and your workshops, all of them on the screen now. So I uh, want to thank you, Nadine, for uh, this lovely talk. Thank Thanks, you for being Christian. here with us. And um, well, wish you all the luck in the next few years developing. Thank you. Right? Thank you. Thanks very much. Always a pleasure. Cheers. Yeah.